Okay, I think it started. Um, yes, I see it's live. <laughs> okay, so uh, Cody Reader, Mars One candidate, um, how about you tell us a little about how you heard about the um, Mars One project? Okay, um, I'll tell you exactly how I heard about it is uh, my roommate actually showed me a YouTube video. And uh, what, what happened is we were talking about the Nixon speech that Nixon would have given if he uh, would have, if the people who went to the moon wouldn't have been able to make it back, or like if they got stranded there. And we were talking about that speech, and I'm like, I made the comment that uh, even if I knew that I was going to be stranded there, or if I was going to die some way, I'd want somebody to do a speech like that for me, because that'd be awesome. And... Uh, uh, one of my roommates, uh, I guess he searched for like one-way space missions or something, and he came across the Mars one thing. And when I found that, I'm like, this is this is per this is brilliant, <laughs> this is brilliant. So I, I I applied for it right away, and uh, here I am. <laughs> it's pretty cool that you made it to the um, 706. Yeah, something like a one in 200 chance of us going. Uh, if they pick randomly, which is a, still a better chance than anyone in history, so I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, and I was watching some of your um, YouTube videos, like uh, your experiments with uh, rocket fuel. Um, how about you tell us a little something about that? <clears throat> Alright, so I've got a channel on YouTube myself. Uh, I've got about 700 subscribers right now, I think. I pretty much just been throwing all the videos that I make up on there. You know, just the Cody Reader's videos, basically. Um, for last year, I did a beekeeping series, because I've been a beekeeper since I was 10 years old, and uh, the school I was attending, I was taking care of their beehive, and before I left the school, they wanted me to, like, do an informational video series to train the new beekeeper, and... Uh, as a result, I have more hours of beekeeping footage on YouTube than anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, I've got a lot of science videos and stuff too. I'm actually currently uploading a video where me and Canyon, my girlfriend, uh, uh, flew a Kerbal to the moon in uh, a, a video game. So <laughs> <laughs> The Kerbal Space Program, right? Yeah. I've I've been playing around with the modded version of it, trying to make it as uh, realistic as possible, and I'm using it kind of like as a flight simulator. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Uh, so, uh, your beekeeping thing, uh, do you think uh, bees would uh, work on Mars for fertilizing crops and stuff? Uh, you know, I'm actually uh, working on a video about that. I've been compiling a bunch of an uh, questions together that I'm going to answer in a video about uh, bees in space. And... Uh, I might do a little bit of research, because I, I think some research has been done, but I may need to do a little bit myself. But I'm pretty sure that honeybees won't work, but bumblebees probably will, because uh, bumblebees are good with enclosed spaces. I've worked with some inside of a greenhouse before, and uh, pollinating a greenhouse, especially a large one, by hand is a lot of work. And it, once I got the bumblebees, it was so much easier. And uh, I've been trying to get another hive of them, but... That is one problem with them is their hives uh, only last a year. So one thing you'd need to do is like find a breed of bumblebee that uh, I can keep the successive generations over and over. You know, it, it would take a little bit of work to keep the bees, but I think we could do it, and I think they'd be worth it. Yeah, and I see you've done some stuff with um, hydroponics too. Um, how about you tell us a little about that? Yeah, I, I've I videoed a little. I videoed a series about it. You can see it on my YouTube channel. Um, I basically got some five-gallon buckets and I filled them with the gravel, and I hooked a water pump up to it uh, to circulate water around. Like I had little sprinklers into each bucket, and then the bucket would run the water down into a trough, which would go down to a fish tank, which would get picked up by a pump and go back through the system, and. Uh, that is currently still working, actually. I'm very surprised. I, I, I turned the pump off a while ago, and the plants are still growing. But, uh, yeah, that thing produced over 100 pounds of food, and it's just, like, a little tiny thing, 12 buckets. Next year, I plan to increase the size up to, well, I want to do 1,000 buckets, but I don't know if I'll be able to find the funds for that. So as many as I can. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah they, they were saying that we wouldn't be able to grow enough food. Um, on Mars 
to keep ourselves alive, uh, what do you think of uh, comments like that? Uh, my comments on that is that uh, the Mars One, like the first people to land, they're probably going to be growing food experimentally. They're, we're not going to rely solely on the food that we can grow. Right. Um, that'll be subsequent missions that come later on. Uh, we're going to have years worth of food sitting there on the planet waiting for us, and so we'll have plenty of time to set up our growth greenhouses and stuff. You know, once we are on Mars and know how plants grow in one third gravity. <laughs> right. What we uh, think? Do you think you'll be um, doing on Mars? Um, what are your goals for um, working on Mars? Oh, a lot of science, obviously. I, I really want to go out with a shovel and dig up some frozen fishies, if there are any there. <laughs> I really want to find life if it's there, uh, do some geology. So I am a geology major here at Utah State University, and I like rocks. <laughs> uh, rocks tell you a story if you know how to read it, and uh, I think that could tell you a lot about Mars and Earth, even. Um, I think probably one thing that's going to take a lot of our time, though, is like upkeep of the base because, you know, where it's only four people there trying to survive, that'll probably take a lot of our time. I look forward to a day when you've got, like, 30 people on there and a good self-sustaining base, and you can do all sorts of science. <laughs> yeah, what do you think of Elon Musk's plan to um, put a larger colony on Mars? You know, I'd love to see it happen. I'm kind of hoping the Mars One thing works first, because if he starts sending stuff, then Mars One will never happen. Right. Uh, other than that, I I think I might volunteer for his missions too if the Mars One thing falls out. <laughs> so, um, anything you else you want to um, tell our um, audience here? Um, you know, your thoughts on um, colonizing Mars or whatever? Um, like the reasons we should do it. <laughs> right. Okay, uh, I think uh, sitting here on the Earth, we've got humanity has all their eggs in one basket. Earth would be pretty easy to take out, and if you if everyone's still living on Earth, and there goes all of civilization and life, even. I mean, I mean, life itself is probably gonna be hard to wipe out, but I think we should be multiplanetary, use the resources and space around us, and expand because. If the universe is devoid of life, then I think we should uh, spread it around because life is just so interesting. <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to talk about? <laughs> um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, um, thanks, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Seems kind of short. I didn't even get to explain why I was wearing ears. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what's with the ears? Uh, my girlfriend put them on me just before I started, and I decided just to leave them. <laughs> they look kind of cute. Yeah, they are. I like them. <laughs> Can you get me the Mars thing? <laughs> yeah, she's she's kind of okay with me going to Mars. I mean, she'll let me. She knows it's my dream, and, and uh, you know... <laughs> I got she she made me this. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that is little, neat. Little paper Mars. <laughs> okay, I'll go ahead and stop this.